Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to play PS Vita games on your PC or your Linux machine using an awesome emulator known as Vita 3K. Now, before we get started here, I do wanna mention that it's still a bit early for this emulator. Head over to their website, check out their compatibility list. They're up to around 280 as of making this video, but they're adding more every week, maybe even every day. But it's definitely worth giving it a try. It works with Linux or Windows. And recently I did a video showing this running on the Steam Deck. If you're interested in checking that out, link is in the description below. But for this one, I'm going to show you how to set it up with Windows. And this basically does transfer over to Linux. You'll just need to download the Linux version. So if you want to play PS Vita games on your PC, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first things first, I'd say the most important part about getting Vita 3K up and running on your PC successfully are your game formats. So there are several out there when dumping your Vita games, and uh, I would highly recommend heading over to the website, link for this is in the description, quick start guide, and at the very bottom, definitely read through the part about dumping games. So there's several ways to dump your Vita games, but some of the methods do not work correctly with Vita 3K. Now I'll tell you what I use. No NPDRM. This is how I dump my games. Everything works out great like this. And I have tested the Maya dump. It says it doesn't work, and obviously it doesn't work yet with Vita 3K. So this is probably the most important part about getting this up and running properly. And it does support .zip or .vpk. All of mine are .zemp because I use no NPDRM. And that's exactly how I get this up and running. So, uh, you know, if you want to dump your own games or if you're going to be searching for games, no NPDRM is the way to go, at least for this tutorial here. There are other methods that work with Vita 3K, but this is the one that I've tested and had really good luck with. And I'll just give you a look at my games here. So I've got a couple folders on my desktop. PS Vita, games are ready. These are the ones that are going to function properly with Vita 3K, and they're all zip. Now, I do want to show you here, when dumping your games, it really depends on what you're using, but sometimes you'll dump a game, and it'll look something like this. So the best way to fix this is highlight all of this. We're going to right-click, show more options, and you want to use 7-zip. Link for this is in the description. We're going to add to whatever the game code is, .zip. We're going to zip it up. And now this game here is ready to be used with Vita 3K. This will not work with RAR files, it has to be .zip. But once you get the hang of what formats are supported with Vita 3K, it's actually quite simple to set up. So we're gonna head back over to vita3k.org. We're gonna find download. And since we're on Windows, we're gonna go ahead and grab the nightly. So from here, we're gonna go to our downloads folder. That's exactly where it downloaded to. Windows, latest.zip, we're going to extract it. You can use WinRAR or 7-zip. We're going to open up the folder we just extracted, and we're going to start vita3k.exe. You'll see two windows. We've got the console in the background and our main window here. This is really what we want to focus on. So you're going to choose your language. You can change the emulator path if you want to keep it portable, but for this video here, I'm just going to go in my app data, roaming the default location, but just keep in mind, you can create a whole new folder wherever you want it and change the path to that folder. It's really up to you. We'll choose next. Now it's gonna tell us that we need to install the firmware and we also need the font package. And lucky for us, we've got two downloads right here. So we're gonna download firmware. It's gonna open up our browser. We're gonna download the update. For some reason, Edge always blocks these firmware updates, but keep in mind, this is from Sony's official website. Keep anyway. And since we're here, we'll download the font package also. Again, it's gonna open up a browser and download it for us. So uh, I just wanna give you a look at this real quick. We've got the psvupdate.pup and we've got the psp2update.pup, our font package and our firmware. These are what we just downloaded. So we're gonna install firmware file, and the first one we're gonna install is the psvupdate.pup, the larger file here. Doesn't take long at all. We'll choose OK, and the emulator's gonna shut down the first time. So we're gonna open it back up, and now we can install the font package, install firmware file. We're gonna go with the psp2update.pup. Again, it's gonna take a second to install. Choose OK. 
and we'll have to do the walkthrough one more time. Hopefully this is fixed in the future. Not exactly sure what's going on, but I've tested this on three different systems and it happens every time. So now we've got the firmware and the font package installed. We'll choose next. Info bar visible. Personally, I like having it set up like this. Live area app screen. You can go with the grid mode if you want to, and we can change the app icon size. Only thing I usually choose here is info bar visible. We'll choose next. OK. And there you have it. We've got the emulator installed with the firmware and the font packages. We can uncheck this if you don't want to show it the next time. It's up to you. So we now need to create a user. Super easy. We're just going to click here. You can name it whatever you'd like. We'll choose confirm. And now we can log in with that user we just created. So now we've got the emulator up and running. We've actually got a few things that we can do here. Not much just yet, but uh, if we want to go into our settings here, we've got our free space, our save data, application, themes. We'll back up. We can head in here, change the date and time, and the language. But really, when it comes down to it, we want to play some games. So we're going to go ahead and install those games, and then we'll mess around with the settings a little bit. So if we head up here to the top, you can see that when we hover over it, it's going to become visible. We've got our file, emulation, debug, configuration, controls, help. We want to go to file because we're going to install some games. So like I mentioned, this will support .zip games or VPK. We're going to go with .zip games. We can install these individually, and I'll show you that real quick, and then we'll just go with the full directory. So select a file. We're going to navigate to where we have our PS Vita games. Mine are in a folder on my desktop called PS Vita Games Ready. And we'll just choose the first one here. It's going to install it. And there we go. You can delete the archive, but personally, I leave it there because it's going to be in a separate location, and I want to keep that for later use. We'll choose OK. And as you can see, it's now populated here. So installing the games is pretty simple. Let's go ahead and do a batch install since we've got a few to install. File, install zip or VPK, select directory, and from here, I'm just going to go to that full folder, select folder, and it's going to install all of those games I have in that one folder. The size on these Vita games varies from around 50 megabytes up to close to 3 gigs. So, you know, depending on what game you're installing, it could take a little longer than the next one. We're on number 5 of 8, and I'll go ahead and let this finish up. Installation complete. We'll choose OK. And it populated the games we just installed. So I just went through and batch installed a bunch of games here. When it comes to using a controller with Vita 3K, I personally like using an Xbox controller, but as long as the controller connects over USB or Bluetooth to your PC, it should be able to detect it. So from the top here, controls, we got keyboard controls. So if you don't have a controller right now, you can always use the keyboard, but we'll go to controllers. My Xbox One controller for Windows is already plugged in and it's actually ready to go with Vita 3K. There's no mapping that I need to do with this one. Next thing I want to talk about is the game configuration. So from the very top, we'll go to configuration. We've got settings here, and there's not too many performance settings that we can mess around with. But from the core section, I usually leave this to automatic, unless you check out their wiki page and you know that some of these modules don't need to be enabled for certain games. You can go with auto and manual, but automatic has seemed to work really well for me. So I'm going to leave it right there. We'll move over to the CPU section, and from here, We've got two options. Unicorn, it's depreciated, so we're going to leave it at dynamic. GPU, from the top here, we can choose our back end, OpenGL or Vulkan. So with AMD, I noticed that I did have to swap between OpenGL and Vulkan. It really depends on what back end works better with which game. But on my NVIDIA card, I find that either OpenGL or Vulkan work out really well. But in general, on AMD and NVIDIA cards, I've found that Vulkan is probably the way to go for a lot of stuff. But this is definitely something you'll have to experiment with. Internal resolution, so we can upscale these games. And you will need a pretty beefy GPU to upscale. But we can go way up here to 8x. Uh, for this video here, we're just going to keep it at 2x. And these games actually scale up really well on a PC. Disable Surface Sync. I leave this going. Enable FXAA. I leave this disabled. 
but I do like keeping VSync on. And we also have some filtering that we can mess around with. Again, it's really going to depend on your GPU, but this should smooth everything out. We're going to go with it. 2x on this, 2x on the resolution. I definitely want to use shader cache here. And that's about it for the performance settings right now in Vita 3K. But we've got the system section. You can go with PSTV mode if you want to, and we can set up the select button. So either cross or circle. So you can set this up for the Japanese region or the US region. Under the emulator section, we can set up the performance overlay, which is going to give us a little bit of information while the game's running. So we can set it up for the top left, top right. We can go minimal, low, medium, or maximum. We're going to go with minimum here. GUI can be adjusted a bit. These are things you'll need to experiment with. And debug, which, you know, if you're not doing any kind of developing with this, this isn't something you really need to worry about right now. So for this, basically all I did was upscale the game. Added a little bit of filtering. We're going to choose save, close. Now it's time to play a game. So uh, let's go with, let's do Asphalt Injection. It's an easier game to emulate. We're going to start this up. And since the Vita did have a touch screen, you can use your mouse to select everything, but I've got my controller connected, which is an Xbox One controller, and it works out fine for all of the games that I've tested so far. But if for some reason you don't have a controller right now, you can always play with the keyboard. The window is fully adjustable. We can drag it to make it a bit bigger, we can go full screen with it, or if you press Control enter you can go total full screen with it. But yeah, this is one of those games that does work pretty decently. We've still got a few graphical issues. If you take a look inside of the cars right now, got a little bit of shader issues going on. But overall, gameplay is pretty good. And we'll just go with one more. Uh, Street Fighter X Tekken. So we're at 2x with this with a little bit of filtering and this is one of those games I was actually really excited about emulating on PC. It does look really good when you got an upscale going. And yeah, even at the native Vita res it looks pretty decent but upscaling does really change the whole dynamic. So it's definitely not perfect yet but it is worth giving a try if you check out their compatibility list and find a game that you want to play here. One other thing I wanted to show you here was custom configs per game. So if we right click on a game, we've got the boot, check compatibility, and custom config. So for Street Fighter X Tekken, we can go to create, and we can switch this out to, let's say, OpenGL. But with this one, Vulcan does work much better. We can go to 2x with it, at least on my system. We can add a little bit of filtering, save, close. And now it's got that CC by it for custom config, and we can go down the list and do this with each of them. So if you find settings that work better per game, you can always set them up per game. But yeah, I think as soon as a lot more people start using this, development will pick up on it, and we'll have some really good Vita emulation on our PC, and even Linux. Now, if you're interested in seeing this emulator running on the Steam Deck, I did make a video. I'll leave a link for that in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Link for the Vita 3K website is down below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.